The year 2022 has come to an end. And at the beginning of 2022, I made a series of predictions about how 2022 would unravel. And today, I would like to revisit those uh, predictions and see how accurate I was in making those predictions. So let's go. Tom Ping, love what you're doing on your channel, buddy. Super congrats, you know, giving your time and energy to nonprofit business channel. Look, man, keep driving that audience. So Tom Ping, look forward to spending some time with you. I know you got the right mindset, so I'd love for you to share some of that from the big V. God bless, be great, 10X. So my very first prediction was that the pandemic was going to come to an end. It's a tragedy and it's very sad. Uh, so I want to predict what's going to happen in the world for the year 2022. Pandemic. So first, my first prediction is that the pandemic is coming to an end in 2022 because people have lost interest in the virus. Even though it is still spreading, most countries have basically opened up. Most countries have decided that economic growth is more important uh, at this time. Most countries in the Western world, even in Vietnam, we have completely opened up, regardless of how many people are dying every day. And that number is actually uh, reducing. A and the severity of the disease is actually reducing. There will be less and less interest in the virus and the pandemic is coming to an end this year, which is good news. So my very first prediction for 2022 was that the pandemic was going to come to an end. And of course I was right. Most of the world has uh, lifted COVID restrictions except China. But because of the white paper revolt or revolution in China, even China is now opening up and now you're seeing uh, increased infection rates in China and we're seeing a lot of people dying in China because they have officially lifted those COVID restrictions. They're going through a period of time where a lot of people are gonna get infected. My prediction is that some of that uh, COVID infections are going to you know, affect the world. A lot of Chinese travelers, when they go out of the country, they're gonna bring another resurgence of COVID to the world. But this time, because the world is mostly immunized, it will not be a significant impact to the world in terms of world population and world's health. But the good news is that my prediction was right. Uh, the COVID pandemic has come to an end in 2022. Let's see the next one. Stagflation. 2022 is going to be a year of very slow economic growth. It is going to be the year of stagflation. What does that mean, stagflation? Stagflation means the economy is stagnant and there's high inflation, meaning that the price of everything is going up, but there is no economic growth. Why does this happen? because, well, we just came out of the pandemic and the economy was slowly recovering and there were a lot of supply chain issues because a lot of the factories, uh, basically they stopped manufacturing and all of a sudden, uh, now the countries are opening up and they have to start manufacturing and everything is in chaos and it's really difficult to get products from uh, one country to another. We have a lot of uh, problems with shipping. That's why we have a supply chain problem. It, it is easing. However, now there is the Russian and Ukrainian war that is happening right as of now. And that is going to create even more disruption in the supply chain, particularly for uh, oil and gas and energy and wheat. Anything that uh, you know, Russia and Ukraine produces. And also they produce significant amount of energy and wheat. So expect that 2022 is the year where you see everything increase in price. Doesn't matter what it is. 
uh, your consumer goods, your electronics, your uh, gas at the gas station, everything is going to increase in price and you won't feel that the economy is doing better because of that. In fact, you'll feel that economy hasn't really grown and your money becomes less and less valuable every day because inflation is very high. So my number two prediction was that 2022 is going to be a period of stagflation, meaning that the economy is going to be stagnant, not growing, and the inflation is going to be very, very high. And guess what? I was right on both accounts. The economy really did not grow. If you ask any manufacturers or exporters in Vietnam, which we work with a lot of them, uh, their number of orders is going down. This is not just in Vietnam, but worldwide in China, in Vietnam, in India. The world export output is actually going down. And a lot of people are experiencing uh, a slow down in economic activities but not only that inflation is going up so your money is worth less and less in every day and price of uh, goods and services is going up every day so again i was right on both accounts stagflation in 2022 this really did materialize let's see what the next uh, prediction i made and whether it's correct or not The markets. So my third prediction will be on the markets. And because there's right now a war going on in Russia and Ukraine, we expect US dollar to increase in value. This is not a prediction I would have made two months ago because most governments in the world have printed a lot of money, including the United States government. They printed a lot of money. In fact, I believe like 25% of all US dollars was printed in the last year. Uh, so the theory is that the US dollar will actually go down in value. So, so the currencies of other countries can now trade more US dollar than before. However, because the war just started four days ago in Russia and Ukraine, and when there is a war, when there is a lot of uncertainty, what happens is that investors like to be conservative and buy US dollars. So even though there was a lot of US dollar printed in the last year, uh, you're gonna see the US dollar rise in value. In fact, this is already happening in the last few days. If you look at the chart for Vietnamese dong against the US dollar, you'll see that the US dollar is already increasing in value. This trend will continue for the rest of the year. Now, what do investors do? What do people do when it's a time of uncertainty? They buy US dollar and they buy gold. So you can expect that gold prices and US dollars will go up. What about Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin is not a real thing. I continue to say that. I know there will be people that argue with me about that, but in time of crisis, in time of uncertainty, people are not going to put the money, at least the big institutional investors are not going to put the money in something that is quite volatile such as Bitcoin. So you can expect Bitcoin value to go down this year. So we have not seen the bottom yet. Bitcoin prices will go down this year. What about the stock market? So in the last two years, because there's a lot of cash flowing around, a lot of people put their money in the stock market. The stock market is already overvalued. And with the current uncertainty and also most companies are not producing the returns on their investment. So you will see that a lot of people will take their money out of the stock market because interest rate will be high due to high inflation. They rather put the money in something else rather than the stock market. You, you will see stock market indexes drop. Stock markets worldwide will not perform well. What about real estate? Well, let's talk about Vietnamese real estate. Vietnamese real estate is contrary to economic theory. So it's completely unpredictable. It doesn't matter what the economic theory tells us or teaches us because in Vietnam, real estate prices are just unpredictable. So I'm just gonna say it's gonna go up because it only goes up no matter what happens. So Vietnamese real estate value will continue to rise despite what happens in the world. 
My third prediction is on the markets. First, I predicted that the US dollar will rise in 2022, and I was certainly right on that. The US dollar rise against most of the world's currency, including the Vietnamese dong. So a while back, we were trading about one US dollar to 2,400 or higher Vietnamese dong. Uh, and this trend will probably continue. Uh, again, this prediction was contrary to most people's predictions. Most people predicted that the US dollar will actually crash because they printed so much US dollar in 2022. But actually that is not the case because US dollar controls the world economy. When the US government increases the interest rate, it will suck all the money back to the United States. And that's what we're seeing in the world today. That's why US dollar is becoming more and more scarce. And if you want to hold on to your value, you want to put your money in the US dollar. Now, Bitcoin. I predicted that the Bitcoin is going to crash. And certainly in 2022, Bitcoin crashed from all the way, I think like $80,000 to $16,000. That is fucking crazy. And I don't think anybody predicted that at the beginning of the year. Everybody was saying that Bitcoin is going to $100,000, uh, even more than that. But actually it did not happen. Bitcoin crashed as I predicted. And in fact, Bitcoin will probably continue to lower in value. I will talk about that in a future video. Again, I do not believe in investing things that are not real. And finally, uh, the stock market also crashed because again, in a environment where this interest rate is high, stock market generally do not do well because investors put their money into more secure investments, not in speculative stocks. Again, we're seeing stock market indices across the world crashing as a result. And finally, real estate in Vietnam. I predicted that Vietnamese real estate will continue to increase in value. And in a way I was right. The Vietnamese real estate value continued to increase in 2022. Uh, however, we're starting to see some slowdown in the real estate market. I will make another prediction for 2023 in another video. I do not see the continued rise in Vietnamese real estate value to continue and I expect a correction in 2023. Now, if you're looking for real estate to buy, 2023 might be a good year, but I will save that for the 2023 prediction video. Let's see what the next prediction is. Energy prices. We talked about the Russian Ukrainian war. Russia is a major producer of oil and gas. They supply most of Europe in terms of oil and gas. They're also a major um, wheat producer in the world. And as Russia is being sanctioned by the Western world, they now can no longer trade uh, their products, their services with the rest of the world because the Western world has cut them off. They're disconnected from the SWIFT banking system. We talked about SWIFT before. In fact, in one of my videos, I talked about how to rob a bank. I talked about SWIFT. Uh, you can find out more in that video. Now, the, the country of Russia has been cut off from the SWIFT system. That means they cannot transact uh, money with the rest of the world. That means no more oil and gas coming from Russia. That means no more wheat coming from Russia. This is definitely going to increase energy prices around the world. So that means you're expected to see higher gas prices at the pump when you fill up your motorbike, when you fill up your car, that means you're gonna spend more money heating your homes or, or you know, turn on that air conditioning. Everything will be more expensive, oil, gas, electricity. That is expected. My fourth prediction was that the energy prices, oil price, gas price will increase across the world. And man, was I right. So if you live in Europe, you will be hurting right now because energy prices, gas prices, oil prices going up and also in the rest of the world, including the United States. Uh, also in Vietnam here, we suffered from high uh, oil prices and gas prices. If you have to fill up your motorbike uh, sometime in the summer, you wouldn't know what I mean. Fortunately for Vietnam, the price of gas has uh, gone back to a normal level in the later part of the year. But my prediction for an increased oil, gas and energy prices was actually correct. Let's see if I get the next prediction correct, okay? US-China relations. 
So my fifth prediction is that the US-China relationship will continue to worsen, especially now that China is backing Russia in its invasion of Ukraine. Sort of. Not, not openly, but China basically supports Russia. China is the only country that will still buy Russian oil and gas and wheat. So what will happen is that the Western world and the United States will now, perhaps in the near future, sanction China as well. Before this all happened, United States already have a plan to punish China for unfair trade practices. Uh, we saw that in the past, Donald Trump's US government was not friendly to China and now Biden's government is even more unfriendly to China. And now that China is backing Russia, now you can expect the relationship in general between US and China is going to worsen. And that means a lot of the businesses, a lot of the international manufacturing companies, now they're worried because it's very expensive to do business in China, costs more, not only because the US is charging high tariff for Chinese goods, but the Chinese business environment also is becoming quite unstable. And a lot of foreign businesses in China are worried about the Chinese government, what they're gonna do, and a lot of them are thinking about leaving China, or at least, you know, have a backup plan to China. And that's why a lot of the businesses are moving to Vietnam, which is great. There's going to be a lot of foreign directed investment into Vietnam because of the international environment and the worsening of relationship between China and US. And this is actually great for Vietnam. So you can expect that the Vietnamese economy, particularly the export sector, is going to grow in 2022. The, so the fifth uh, prediction was for the US-China relationship to worsen to sour even more so. And actually my prediction was absolutely correct. In the year 2022, the United States actually exert even more sanctions against uh, China. For example, there is a semiconductor export restriction from the US government, which prohibits US companies from exporting uh, technology, particularly semiconductor chip technology, to, to China and this really really is a crippling move for Chinese companies because a lot of Chinese companies need uh, you know semiconductor technology from the US to build products and of course the United States did that to ensure that China does not surpass the United States as an economic power and that's what basically the United States fear uh, that China is going to become a world dominant power that may even surpass the United States as a result of all these sanctions that are imposed on China, a lot of businesses are looking for China plus one uh, strategy and a lot of them are coming to Vietnam. So for example, Apple has just announced that they're gonna make Apple iPhones in Vietnam and also in India. So they're also looking for backup plans. They're looking for alternatives to China. They don't wanna put all their eggs in one basket. So you're gonna see a lot more manufacturing move to Vietnam. This has already happened in 2022, and this will probably continue in 2023. That's why Vietnamese export is going to continue to be strong in 2023, despite the uh, world economic situation. You can expect even more foreign direct investment to come to Vietnam. Again, my prediction on the China-US relationship was completely dead on, and I was completely right on that one. So let's see what the next prediction was. Electrification of cars. With the gas prices, with the oil prices going up, gas is going to be more expensive at the pump. And what that means is that more and more and more people are going to be interested in electric cars globally. So the move to electric cars is already happening in Europe, in US. I know that most of my friends don't want to buy gas cars anymore. They only want to buy electric cars because one, they're faster, two, they're cheaper, and they're just better for the environment. So most people do it for those reasons. And now gas is going to be super expensive and you're gonna see people across the world adopting electric cars even faster. And yes, also in Vietnam, more and more people are going to buy electric cars. I know me, I already put the down payment on the VinFast E34 electric car. 
I hope to get it very soon. Apparently, there is some government bureaucracy, so VinFast could not release the cars to the uh, buyers yet. I hope to be the first ones to get the VinFast E34 in Ho Chi Minh. It hasn't, as far as I know, nobody's got that car in Ho Chi Minh City yet. I hope to be the first one to do it. I definitely want to do a review on that car. But not only that, I also purchased my second VinFast electric car, which is VF8 Plus. And the reason I bought it is because apparently that is going to be a very fun car. It can go from zero to 100 in about 5.5 seconds. It's not very fast, but you know, in Vietnam, that's fast enough. But my point is that a lot of people will start looking at electric cars even in Vietnam and Vietnam has a good selection of domestically made electric cars by VinFast Group and you're gonna see more imports with hybrid or electric options. You're gonna see more and more electric cars in Vietnam and you're going to start to see electric uh, charging stations in Vietnam as well. So my sixth prediction was that uh, the world is going to catch on electrification of cars. More EVs are going to be made and sold and used by consumers. And boy, was I right. So the data for worldwide EV production has increased every year, including 2022. I believe the latest data is that about six to 8% of all cars uh, in the market today are uh, electric. So that is going to continue to uh, increase and I'm very happy to see Vietnam is also making electric cars and in fact I want to be a pioneer first I bought the first uh, VFE 34 domestic uh, electric car made in Vietnam only for the domestic market and later on I got the VF8 plus and I made a lot of videos about them I am still in love with VinFast and uh, their cars uh, although I wish the quality could be higher but the point is that electric cars are going to be in our future it is uh, inevitable and i'm happy to see that there are more and more charging infrastructure for electric cars all over vietnam now like if you go to any Vin group property you'll see so much uh, you know charging stations and i, I believe uh, uh, Vin group is doing the right thing uh, building the infrastructure to support vietnam in the future and already in the world uh, you know like you can basically drive your car anywhere and and and, and, and find a charging station so uh, i think it's a matter of time although the ev movement will probably meet some challenges ahead because of the limited supply of rare earth uh, metals uh, you know that are required to make the battery and uh, they have to figure out a way to to find those supplies and also to recycle them because there's going to be a lot of electric cars that um, are going to be out of service end of life and uh, we need to be able to recycle those batteries and make new batteries out of them because there's only so much lithium there's so much cobalt there's only so much rare earth minerals in the earth crust and we cannot just continue to mine them we'll run out um, so recycling will be very important again I'm, I'm making a prediction here but but really what this video is about is whether my prediction is right and absolutely I was right on this one as well uh, electric cars are going to be in our future and 2022 is an evidence of a continued growth of electric cars across the world let's see if I get the next one right eh? Metaverse! What the fuck is that? So my final prediction, my number seven prediction is about the Metaverse. Metaverse is such a popular word these days. Uh, everybody talks about the Metaverse. Every month there is a workshop, there is an event, there is a conference about the Metaverse. Everybody is talking about the Metaverse. It's going to be the biggest thing in the world. It's going to change the way we work and play and oh my god, Metaverse, man! But you know what? My prediction is nobody really knows what Metaverse is. You're gonna go to those workshops, conferences, and nobody has any fucking idea what Metaverse is, alright? They're gonna talk all day all night they're gonna show you pictures they're gonna show you video games they're gonna show you avatars but nobody will actually know what metaverse is 
this year, not in 2022. Nobody has a fucking idea what Metaverse is. And my prediction is that everybody's gonna talk about it, but nobody has any idea what it is. And a lot of venture capitalists, a lot of investors are gonna put a lot of money into Metaverse companies, and then they will get nothing out of it. And it's basically a big giant scam. All right, that is my prediction. But that is not to say that all this money going to metaverse companies will not produce something because I believe that by investing in metaverse companies, we will find solutions to problems using metaverse related technologies such as blockchain, such as cryptocurrency, such as NFTs, non-fungible tokens. All of these technologies will find practical use in real life because of this money being invested in metaverse but the metaverse concept itself nobody will know what it is it basically is a stupid idea and the metaverse concept will not happen because no one is gonna put a fucking goggle on their face to have a meeting with their colleagues that is just fucking stupid haha <laughs> so my, my seventh prediction for 2022 was that metaverse is going to fail because it's a fucking stupid idea. And I was right, because in 2022, we saw the, 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 the largest uh, stock value crash in the world, probably, uh, you know, Meta, basically the parent company of Facebook, they, their stock went all the way down and they lost about $200 billion just because Mark Zuckerberg decided that he wants to pursue the metaverse and nobody in the world gives a shit because nobody in the world knows what, what exactly it is and, and the world doesn't need it. They don't need to put down a fucking goggle in order to have a meeting with their colleagues, right? I mean, that's just fucking stupid idea. And I mean, I don't know, when I first heard the idea, I just think it's totally stupid. Why would anybody do that? And of course, I'm right. And the metaverse idea is going to die. I believe that meta Facebook will have to shift focus at some point. Eventually they have to realize they made a huge mistake and they have to shift focus at some point in time. I will talk about that in the 2023 prediction. You know, it, it just doesn't make any sense to spend billions and billions and billions of dollars to build a metaverse where you only have maybe like 12 users, all right? So metaverse is not gonna work. And I predicted that and it happened in 2022. It'll never work in the next 10 years. All right, because the technology is simply not there. No, no one's gonna put on a fucking goggle. Now, those were the seven predictions I made in 2022, back in February 2022. And I am actually right on every single account. But later on in the year, I also made other predictions. So I'll actually share that with you. Next prediction is the World Cup of 2022. And I'm going to predict that Argentina is going to win over France 5-0. That is my prediction, okay? So I predicted that Argentina is going to win five points to zero against France. Uh, I was right on Argentina winning, but I was wrong on the, uh, on the points. So actually it was 3-2-3 three, three, and then they... Shut up. And actually it was 3-2-3 three, three, and uh, they actually decided the winner in uh, the final penalty uh, round. Actually, I don't even watch football. I don't understand football and I don't care about World Cup, but that was just a lucky guess, right? Argentina won, so I would say I was right on Argentina, but I was not right on the scoring, but I don't care. I, I did it just for fun. I mean, people asked me to, to, to speculate, to guess who's gonna win, so I did, and I don't really, uh, have much uh, you know understanding of football so uh, that was just a lucky guess and also uh, earlier this year I predicted that uh, the Russian and Ukrainian war that Ukraine is actually going to win and that Putin's government probably will fail as a result that Putin will be actually pushed out of power in 2022 now that international community sees that Russian military is not that capable and you're seeing that the west us france uh, germany uh, of course the traditional allies like canada uk australia they're all united against uh, russia and now, now they're willing to increase their sanctions they're willing to put more military weapons uh, on the ground for ukrainian people and they're going to give more aid because now they know that they actually might win this one and they are all going to 
punish Russia for this, and they're all going to aid Ukraine. Ukraine is going to get a lot of support from the West to fight this war. Eventually, this is going to increase discontent in Russia as well, because the Russian people doesn't want this fight. The Russian people doesn't want to kill their own brothers in Ukraine, right? You're going to see more and more Russian people standing up and say, hey, you know what? This is stupid. And they're going to go against their government. And Vladimir Putin is going to be under a lot of pressure. In fact, this may force a regime change, meaning that Vladimir Putin might be pushed out of office, out of power. And that would be my prediction that this war is going to last a, a long time and that eventually the discontent in the world, the opposition in the world, plus uh, opposition from Russian people will push Putin out of power. But that one has not materialized. So if you look at the, the situation in, in Ukraine, uh, I believe Ukraine is actually putting up a very strong defense and now offense against Russia. And if you have to say which side is winning, I would say it's, it's Ukraine. So I was right on that account that Ukraine is going to win this war, but, uh, but the Putin's government continues to be in power. So I was not correct in uh, speculating Putin's government will fail. However, uh, it's only 2022. I still believe that uh, the, the war will actually bring down Putin's government, maybe in 2023, maybe in 2024. We will see. So, so let's recap. So number one, I pr predicted that the pandemic is going to come to an end in 2022, and I was correct on that account. And number two, I predicted that uh, 2022 will be a period of stagflation, meaning that economic output will be slowed and inflation will be high. I was correct on that. Number three, I was correct on the market predictions that US dollar is going to go up, Bitcoin is going to crash, stock market is going to crash, and Vietnamese real estate price will be magically held high. I was correct on all those accounts. And number four, energy price across the world is going to increase because of the war. I was correct on that as well. We also experienced some energy fluctuations here in Vietnam. Um, I was correct on the energy price predictions. Number five, I predicted the US-China relationships to worsen and I absolutely was correct on that. We saw many, many punitive uh, sanctions against China from the US that are not very good for China right now and which is pushing a lot of uh, manufacturers, a lot of companies out of China. They're looking for China plus one strategy. They're looking for another country to invest and set up shop and they're looking uh, increasingly to Vietnam and also India. And number six, I predicted Electrification car movement will continue. EV sales will continue to increase. We certainly saw that in 2022. And also Vietnam has made a uh, entry into the world of EV with VinFast, VF8, VF9. And I wish them the most success. And number seven, I predicted that Metaverse uh, will fail. And I was absolutely right on that account. Uh, Metaverse did not work out. In fact, this dramatically affected meta stock prices as we saw in 2022. Number eight, I predicted that Argentina is going to win the World Cup. I was correct on that. I was wrong on the score, but who cares about the score? And number nine, I predicted that the Russian and Ukrainian war, uh, Ukraine will win. I was sort of right on that one. And I was wrong on the Putin government failing in 2022. Uh, but that remains to be seen. I still believe that they will fail. So somewhere on the screen, you know, you will see my, my list of predictions and my accuracy. And I think my predictions for 2022 was actually really, really good. And tomorrow I will release my predictions for 2023. And uh, let's see if my predictions for 2023 will turn out as good as my predictions for 2022. Why don't you make some predictions for 2023 down in the comments below? And one year later, we can go revisit those predictions and see if we're right. Okay, so uh, take some fucking action and I hope you had a good 2022, even though it was really a shit year. And uh, don't be a fucktard.